What's up, my gang affiliates? Welcome back to the Crack Shack. Today, we're putting you guys back on to sound design steroids. And by the end of this video, you'll never have to download transition effects again. Cause Macro Daddy X is here and he's taken us to Rack City. As always, make sure to like, comment, and smack that subby butt. If you want some dance music, pure diesel fuel, it's Crack Friday. Uh-oh, it's Crack Friday. <laughs> Whole site, 30% off. Without further ado, lock the fuck in. And for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Morgan, and this is Cracked Records. And this is Cracked and Records. This is Cracked Records. <laughs> Before we hop into this absolute black hole, I gotta give a shout out to my boy Wookie. He hit me up and said, infinite transition effects rack. And I said, hold my headphones. So shout out to the GOAT. If you guys wanna download this rack, it'll be free for anyone that has purchased crack stuff in the past. So when you go to checkout, the discount will be applied immediately. All right, lock back in because as you can see, there's about a thousand little things that we're gonna go over today. So the gist of this rack is it's an infinite transition effects rack and it's all powered by this first knob over here. So however long your transition is, you would just drag it up or down and it's gonna give you an infinite amount of sweeps and downlifters that are perfectly timed based on your automation. Let's get a quick demo really quick. So I just drew an up and then a downward sweep motion right here. And then if we hit randomize. Give it to me. Oh. And then we could also do just noise if we wanted to right here. Ah. All right, here we go. So let's just start at the front of the rack here and then work our way all the way back to the hundreds of different things that are automated. And keep in mind, all these principles, even though this is a simpler type of sound, this applies to any sort of sound design. So if you just take a sound apart and learn exactly how it works, you could then start to program the random parameters. And then from one preset, you could then be generating hundreds, if not millions and billions of presets. All right, so first up in the rack, we have this one knob control, which controls about 25 different things further down in the chain. And this just gives you the entire shape of the sound. So if we listen, the more you drag it up, the more tension it's gonna give you. And then if you pull it down, it's gonna bring the energy down. After that, we have the pitch amount macro, and this is mapped to all the different oscillators pitch envelope amount inside of Serum 2. And the way that you get all these little macro parameters to pop up is you just hit configure and then you just have to touch things and it'll pop up down here. Then for the effects, I'm not sure if they updated it, but sometimes you do, yes, you have to press automate for it to pop up at all. So the pitch amount is mapped to macro two inside of Serum 2 and this controls every different oscillator's pitch all at once. So if we listen. and that'll just give you a more or less drastic pitch effect. After that, we have this make wobble, which is also mapped to Serum 2, and this is gonna turn on a wobble effect that gives you that auto pan feel. So if we listen. And for the on and off stuff, since these go from a range of zero to 127, after you pass 64, that's when it's gonna start to wobble. After that, we have the wobble speed. Then we have the wobble shape, which is mapped to the LFO inside of Serum. So if we take a look at it. So it could be a ramp or a triangle or a sine wave. And keep in mind all of these controlled by the random button up here. So this is how you just get infinite amounts of variations between iterations. After that, we have a pitch LFO on off, which is mapped to macro three inside of Serum 2. So if we go past 64, it's gonna give us a pitch envelope that repeats. And that's just a different style of riser. After that, we have the octave and the wavetable for all three oscillators. 
And keep in mind, all of them are on default shapes because it's easier to design crazy shit from the start if you don't have an absolute billion amount of options. So I highly recommend to just keep it as simple as possible when you start, and then you can build up from there. After that, we have this just noise macro, and this one's actually pretty interesting. So inside of Serum 2, I sent all the oscillators to go to the filter, and then I have the just noise to control the level on the filter. So if I do just noise, all the oscillators go through the filter, and if I turn them off, then they're all gonna be silent, and then we just get the noise. And for this macro, I actually went ahead and did exclude macro from randomization, just because I didn't really want it to just happen whenever it wants. I would rather have it be a thing that I choose to have just noise. So if you ever want something to not be random, just remember that this exists. Then we have this washout macro, which is mapped to my channel strip, which comes later on in the rack and an output gain level just to turn it up or down if we needed to. Then we have this goat daddy don't touch button. So the way I set this guy up is the biggest issue with the randomized racks, or it's not an issue, but rather limitation, is that you can't do multiple at once. But with this don't touch button, I have it set up to this max for live device that I made. I think it's called auto trigger. So I made this knob. If you change it by one, it triggers a button. So this trigger is mapped to the randomize on macro daddy. And what that means is that every time we hit random on here, all this has to do is just move the slightest bit. And then if we check it out and we hit random right here, you could see it's also triggering this macro daddy, which has another 64 macros set up inside of it. So my favorite workflow is always to put the things that you would actually need to mess around with at the front of the rack. And then you could use macro daddy for the more like nuanced parameters that you don't really wanna be messing around with. And that way they could just randomize in the background. The last note would just be to set all the parameters inside of Serum, you just hit this map button right here. And then I would just listen to the audio playing and then set it at the maximum amount. So for something like the A wave or whatever, you could just pull it up all the way and then you could drag the limit down. And the same would go for the minimum. So if you wanna set the minimum, you would drag it all the way down and then drag this up to set it. All right, now if we jump inside of Serum 2, I'm not gonna go over every single one of these because there's like 40 of them, but the main gist is for the one knob, I have this mapped to a bunch of levels and filters and detunes as you can see right here. So as it goes up, it gets wider and louder and more filtered out. And then as it comes down, it loses the filtering and becomes more upfront in the mix. So as you can see, we got maybe some Ben plus minus here. And then in the effects, if we check it out, we have this filter that comes up. So if we move this from the front right here. So we're introducing the high frequencies over time and then making it more delayed and more reverbed out the higher we go. And then just a couple more things inside of Serum 2 right here. If we head over to the matrix, if you look at this little wavetable right here, what I've done is I've set up the macro to be an on off. So this is the response curve right here that I edited. And if we check it out as we press random, you could see that this would be zero to 50. And if it's from zero to 50, it's zero. And then if it's from 50 to 100, it's 100. So this is working as an on off switch. And then we have a slightly different version of that over here. So this one's set to either 50 or 100, and then it's a 50% chance that it's either or. After that, we got Macro Daddy X just dropped. Absolute weapon. Also, absolute pain in the ass to design. So the gist with this Max for Live device is instead of 16 macros, you actually have 64. So if you hit these pages right here, you could set up to 64 different macros. And then you have this little preset browser over here so you can store and save presets. And then you could randomize all the macros all at once or just one page or any page that you want. And then you could unmap them all right here. And then also I modified it so you have the random buttons just on individual macros. And then you could also just hit this lock right here to keep anything the same. So the way that I use this guy is just for all my crazy fucking sound design sessions. So I like to do my sound design separately from my production just because 
of the absolute wormhole that it can become. So yeah, if you're a fucking absolute sound design demon like I am, this guy is goaded. And then we also, to the right over here, I have these yes, no parameters. So you can map these to stuff and then it could go on and off. And then I also have these trigger maps. So if you wanted to set it up to a button, then you could just map it like that. And then all of these can be, again, just randomized from over here. And then if you use the auto trigger, or actually, so you, there is two versions of the Macro Daddy, so you could just completely not even use the stock Ableton rack. There's a, I made a MIDI effect version. So you could just put that at the front of your rack, and then you just have 64 macros, and you could just go crazy with it. Then lastly, at the end, we just have some simple post-processing. So I use standard multiband comp a lot just to tame the highs of stuff, especially with these effects sort of sounds. So sometimes if you're using like the just noise, it could get pretty harsh in the highs. And this is just gonna tame the high end. Then after that, I have an expander. So this is just working at an almost one to two ratio for like anything under 30. So if it was, if we had a randomization that was super quiet, it would just try to balance it out for us. After that, we have this muter rack. So it's just a utility with the mute turned on. And then we have the on off mapped to this macro. And then this macro, when we put the one knob macro to zero, it switches this from off to on. And that way, if we wanted to cut a rising effect, it would just be completely silent. And the way you could set that up is if we check out this mapping right here and you set it from zero to one, then whenever this knob goes to zero, this one goes to one and then everything's muted so that if you had like a pre-drop, everything would just be completely silent and there wouldn't be any delay or reverb bleeding out. After that, we have the gain map, which is right here. And then we have the washout just to add a little bit more space if we wanted it. And then just an analog clip saturator just to make sure with the soft clip on to make sure we're not clipping. Before we vibe the fuck out one last time, I just want to remind you guys, if you want the transition effects rack, if you've bought anything on crackrecords.com, it's just gonna automatically apply a discount and you'll get it for free. And then Macro Daddy just dropped. So if you wanna check that guy out, shit, 30% off crackrecords.com. Let's get it. All right, gang, that's gonna do it for the sound design sauce. Make sure to like, comment, and fucking clap. That's heavy, bud. Links are in the description for all the production sauce. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.